3D Mario games have a special place in my heart. I grew up with the Galaxy games, and I've played Mario 64 really early on, on an, um... It, 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 it was an emulator. Yeah. Um, I remember going to the school's computer room, booting up their original Nintendo 64 console with original Nintendo 64 console game cartridge for Mario 64 game. Yeah, and having a blast playing through the game. I even completed the whole thing a couple times. Mario Galaxy 2 remains in my top 3 favorite games of all time to this day, and Galaxy 1 is not far behind it. With the re-release of 3D World on Switch with the added funky mode, I got the chance to experience yet another game that I now hold as one of my favorites. How can I not with a soundtrack like this? So, Mario Odyssey should have also been up there for me. I have loved every single 3D Mario game I have played. Except for you, Sunshine. And I've played Odyssey at launch, when I was, like, 13? Back then, surely the nostalgia goggles were still firmly planted on my head for that one. And yet, I barely think about it. When I'm thinking of my favorite Mario games, I often forget to mention it. Was it because there were other impactful games for me that year? That just might have overshadowed it? Or maybe it was just a more forgettable experience somehow. That's it. I need to make this right. I'm revisiting Super Mario Odyssey. Let's see if it lives up to its 3D Mario comrades. And oh, does it got a lot to live up to. Like any self-respecting game, we start with kidnapping and attempted murder. But don't fret, because Mario was wearing his signature feather-falling boots, and now we can start running around in the world of Super Mario Odyssey. Or more like, rolling around. Oh my god, this game's movement feels great. I'm like Sonic rolling around super fast. Oh wow, <laughs> I'm so used to the same yahoos, yippies, and wahas that when that unique Mario voice line kicks in, my brain just melts away for a second. We now have Cappy on our side, which means we've unlocked the game's full movement set and its new main mechanic of capturing. Uh, let's ignore it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Who needs a frog anyway? I'm Mario, the Jumpman, that's my whole thing. That didn't look as cool as it seemed. I was here for five minutes. Atop the hat tower we go. You suck. Die! Become ball of electricity and now we can actually start the game. Cascade Kingdom is more of a tutorial. Most of the kingdom isn't open to you your first time around. Doors are locked, places are sealed away. There's a few extra moons you can get, like this dinosaur one, and the one behind the wall when you're 2D. Wait, wait. Dinosaurs? 2D Mario? They just hit you in the face with the cool mechanics, don't they? I remember now, the reactions that people had seeing Dinosaur Mario for the first time <laughs> were kinda crazy. Boss fight time, madame, you're going down. I captured your gold-plated chain chomp and smack you in the face with it. Something I noticed while replaying this fight is the soundtrack adapts to your captures. Look, when I capture the chain chomp, the music becomes dog themed? Such a cool detail. After that boss fight is done with, we get our first multi-moon and fix up the broken ship we found, and off we go to what I argue is the first true kingdom of the game, the Sand Kingdom. They really didn't try with the kingdom names, did they? It seems like all the creativity was spent where it counts, because the Sand Kingdom is awesome. We have birds to catch, circles to draw, seeds to plant, this thing? I love that guy. When, when I can actually turn around, please! We can even get dressed for the occasion. Hi, ah, yes, the classic Sand Kingdom look. How inoffensive. I'm sure no one had a problem with this. 
We have some fun stuff to do. Let's go be a... And beat up sheep and climb an inverted pyramid with a 2D section. You can even find a moon behind the wall. <laughs> what an original idea I haven't seen in... Five minutes? Three? One. Oh. No matter. We're at the boss fight now. And whoops. Uh, okay. Now I... Oh. Okay. Uh, punch him in the face with his own fists. You're done and we're out of here. Now to choose between the lake and wooded kingdoms. They really couldn't think of anything better to name these places. I know we name things horribly all the time, but I wasn't looking for realism in my Mario game. Well, lake kingdom it is. Now this is a short one. We jump up here, we got a couple of moons along the way. Some are just standing there, by the way. We fight the mini boss by jumping on his hat and we're done. Oh, missed one. There, now we're done. Now, I know there's more to do in this kingdom if you choose to go below water, but I think they set the moon requirement way too low. I had no reason to engage with half the kingdom. Personally, just felt a bit forgettable. The atmosphere here is really good though. I love the colors. It's just like chill vibe overall. Wooded Kingdom is up next, and the soundtrack here slaps! Okay, I'm joking. You gotta go a bit further in. But now it's great! Yeah, the place is great, however, this is where the game's flaws started bothering me a bit more. Because of its structure, Odyssey expects you to find a lot of moons. But that's no issue, because there's moons everywhere! But that's an issue, because if there's moons everywhere, and they all provide the same reward, it can often feel unrewarding. I break a nut, one moon. Go through an entire platforming segment, fight a little mini-boss for story progression, yeah, I get a different animation for getting this moon, but the reward is still the same. The effort I put in felt very different for the reward to just be one moon. Think Breath of the Wild's Koroks. Moons follow a similar design. You're not meant to get them all. There's many more than required to move along, and a lot of these moons are not unique. They're just sitting there or behind the same puzzle every time. Sure, there's a lot more uniqueness than in the Koroks, because the scale of this game is very different. If that wasn't the case, we would be in deep trouble. But this design language, while it leads to really fun gameplay, and it's part of the reason why Odyssey has an active speedrunning community much larger than galaxies or 3D worlds, it adds so many ways of going about things, so many paths to choose and optimize and pair with the game's movement, it's a near perfect speedrunning game. But that kinda makes it a little forgettable for me in just doing a normal playthrough. Some of these kingdoms go by so fast, you blink and it's over. A lot of moons seem to blend together in my head and there's not many memorable segments because of it. Something like Galaxy has every level be a unique galaxy with its own aesthetic, feel and music, while Odyssey has a couple kingdoms with a bunch of stuff crammed into them, but when that stuff isn't really all that different from the stuff in the kingdom prior, it can all just blend together in my head. I think this is the reason why I didn't think about this game much when compared to other 3D Mario games. Its design makes it inherently more forgettable to me personally. Obviously, it should go without saying that this is just an opinion on how I felt experiencing this game. You might have felt a similar way, or totally not, and that's okay! Oh, we are done with the Wooded Kingdom, let's see what awaits us next. Wait, is that? It's, it's Bowser! We're catching up to you! Time to have a fight in the clouds with a beautiful scenery, creative boss fight. We kick him back to his ship and are blown away for it. One thing though, Cloud Kingdom, is this really a kingdom? It's kind of just a floating boss fight arena, like one big cloud. That's enough to be classified as an entirely separate kingdom in the Mario universe? Okay, sure. I think they just wanted to keep consistent with their boring naming scheme. Oh yeah, we're gonna die! But don't fret, because feather falling, remember? Now we are in the classic Poison Swamp. But unlike FromSoft, they've made it actually traversable. We start by getting robbed and using our right to self-defense to kill the thief in cold blood. Now that that's fixed, we can get around to collecting some moons. 
these expanding long boys are really fun to control and breaking stuff open with those guys is also extremely fun. This one suffers a bit from being too small though. I actually loved the place, wish it would have gone on for a bit longer, but I didn't even need to climb the mountain to get enough moons to head over to the next kingdom, the Kingdom of New York. This is Mario Odyssey at its most recognizable. From the very start, they showed off the Metro Kingdom, and we were wowed to have Mario be sitting right next to realistic proportion humans in New Dong City. And it's great, it's the area I remembered the most from this game, I loved every second of it, jumping rope, going around the city jumping from rooftop to rooftop, reuniting the musicians to play with Pauline in the big celebration, and what a celebration it is! Now, seriously, how can you not love Jump Up Superstar? I know it got a bit overplayed, but I feel like it's been long enough for that to wear out. This sequence hit me. The song is so catchy, the visuals so nice, I was singing along and jumping along and I was rewarded with the multi moon. I already had more than enough moons collected by this point, I could have moved along, but this kingdom is the one that made me not want to. I stayed around until the end, the creativity here is palpable, I can taste it in the asphalt streets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's creativity for sure. Heading back to the Odyssey, we've hit another fork in the road. I decided on going to the Snow Kingdom first because I love winter, and honestly, it may be a small kingdom, but I'm a fan of this place. A lot of interesting and creative ideas on display. The kingdom is structured like a challenge of sorts. Four rooms, each unlocking part of the door to the final room. And that final room is a racetrack. You're bouncing around everywhere, trying to hit the perfect spots to pick up more speed and win the race. I was done with the entire thing in 15 minutes, but this time, it, it felt rewarding. Now, on to a larger kingdom. Time to go to the beach. But, oh, Mario, you're gonna have a stroke here. There you go. Much better. This kingdom has four main switches to hit, spread across itself. It's a good way of incentivizing exploration. You end up going to pretty much everywhere in the kingdom to hit these. The vibes here are also impeccable. Incredibly chill and inviting environments when they're not trying to kill you, that is. Underwater segments and a boss fight that uses the entire kingdom as its arena. I always thought that was really cool. It's also a good time to mention how every kingdom has its own different captures contributing to a feeling of uniqueness. You never know what you'll transform into next. Look, I'm even beating this boss as a water blob squid thingy. <laughs> But let's move on, let's move on, because now it's time for the second favorite kingdom of mine, the Luncheon Kingdom. For the first time, a place in this game has a name that I feel like is unique. Luncheon Kingdom. Lunch. Eon. Eating forever. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. We can fight this guy from Wooded Kingdom again. Kind of funny how they reuse boss fights like this. Actually, that reminds me. Brutals! I don't really care for them that much, like, at all. There's this game's replacement for the Koopalings, and they do a good job at it, but there's only four of them, so we end up fighting them as bosses more than once. I don't know how to feel about that. The boss fights themselves are okay. This guy right here is actually the most memorable for me. They all have their own style and feel unique enough. Just wish there was more of them, you know? One for each major kingdom, perhaps? But that's okay. They're just the mini-bosses anyway, and this game presents us with a variety of unique bosses to fight. Making our way into the city, we poison the food supply, gamble at the casino, and leave towards the big slab of meat. This room? Yeah, I hit every cheese block possible. And they hit the moon shard thing below the hot yogurt. Well played. 
I was here for five minutes, I can't even be mad. Going up the mountain, I become what I've always aspired to be, a huge slab of salted steak. And the bird acknowledges my beauty and brings me right up to the multi-moon as a reward. He does realize I was catfishing and I'm actually an Italian plumber from Brooklyn, so dispatches me accordingly. Little does he know, I do hold grudges and am prone to homicide. So I make my way back up the mountain at lightning speeds, skipping most of the kingdom to make sure I get my revenge. I break every single ingredient on his prized soup, ruining his life's work and drown him in the very stew he dedicated himself to perfect. Okay, Mario game stories are dark. Can't, can't believe that's canon. Speaking of dark, Souls, we're about to get blasted by something that could have come straight from Dark Souls 3. A big ass lightning dragon that shoots us down. I actually love this scene of Bowser flying towards the moon, foreshadowing what's to come as epic music plays in the background. It's so extra and just grand. Reminds me of how Mario Galaxy cutscenes used to be. After painstakingly learning his moves and mastering my dodges, I was finally able to defeat the Lord of Lightning Ruined Dragon. That's his actual name by the way, oh my god. We land outside of Bowser's castle instead of just parking the ship at the top? Mario just likes the challenge, okay? <laughs> Let's give Bowser a chance here. And it's time for us to finally infiltrate Bowser's castle! I like the setup for this kingdom, it's like a linear climb to the top, grabbing moons along the way. The bird is also my favorite capture, I don't know, something about the movement with this and the wall climb sections, I really like it. We eventually make it to a semi-boss rush, it's just the two easiest brutals, and I almost found a way to die to them. Nice. But no matter, because after they're dead, we are hit with this banger! I love the soundtrack for the final stretch of the climb, it just fits so perfectly and hypes me up for the battle that is to come. And when the battle does arrive, it's incredible. The Brutals fight as one on a mech and it's so cool. Bonus points because you use the bird here too. Also you can get multiple hits in on a single round if you're skilled enough to stand on top of the boss and it feels great to do so. After another multi-moon, the Odyssey is now complete, and we can head to our final destination, the moon. Our goal is straight up ahead, and there is no time for nonsense. We started with an unintended skip, and we are ending with one. I flawlessly perform a perfect jump that leads us directly to the final boss. After attempting it for about 20 minutes or so... Bowser, your wedding is over. Oh, it seems I have underestimated your abilities for tomfoolery and I found myself falling down a bottomless pit towards what I can only presume to be the end of my life. Is what I would say if I didn't have my signature feather falling boots. Time to end this once and for all, Bowser. Fight me. After landing the final blow, the cave is starting to crumble, and we have to take over the body of Bowser for the ending segment to the sound of Pauline singing.
we escape the crumbling moon caves and finally get the long-awaited reward. Rejection. I shouldn't have lied on the profile. So this was Super Mario Odyssey. If I'm being honest, I was pleasantly surprised by this revisit. For some reason, out of all the three Marios, this one, I just never gave it the value it deserves. And now I see, Odyssey is a fantastic platformer full of fun segments and countless new ideas. I do have my problems with it, I think it is substantially shorter than other 3D Mario games, and I'm a bigger fan of the level structure found in Mario 64, the Galaxy games, and 3D World. Might be nostalgia, again, just personal bias. Overall though, I'm happy to recognize that Odyssey is an incredibly polished and quality game that surely impacted the lives of many. That being said, 8 out of 10, I'll put it right here.